QuickBooks Online 2024. Create invoices using billable time, receive payment, and make deposit. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to save time with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time, the reports on the left. In the favorites, we're right-clicking on that balance sheet to open link in a new tab, right-clicking on the P and the L, the profit and loss, the income statement to open link in a new tab, and doing the same for the trial balance, the trusty TB. Let's tab to the right, close the hamburger, and change the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 022824 tab. We want to see a side-by-side -side breakout month by month, and then we will run it to refresh it. Tapping to the right, repeating the process, hamburger, closing it, then ranging, changing it, 010124 tab, 022824, and then the month by month, breaking it out, and then refreshing the report, tabbing to the, the right, one more time, uno vase mas, here we go, one more time, 010124 tab, uh, 022824 tab, and we will say we want the month by month breakout and run it to refresh it. Muy bien, muy bien. If we do the Spanglish, Spanish, English, muy good. That looks muy good. Here we go. Let's go to the let's go to the balance sheet tab. Last time we entered our time imagining a similar situation as to a job cost system such as a partnership for a CPA firm or law firm like you might have seen in the Devil's Advocate movie where the guy was working for like the mafia or something. But the law firm, this is the point, the law firm, no matter where you're at, the law firm is going to be like, we, we, I don't care if you were even just thinking about the client, you have to bill the client so we can charge the client is the general idea here. Well, we have a similar setup that we're basically have guitar lessons now and the guitar instructors, we as the partners or the owner of the business are the money makers. We bring in the people that want guitar lessons and then the guitar instructors teach them and we bill out for the guitar instructor's time. So in a prior presentation, we're imagining that a week has passed. They've given us their timesheets. We entered it into the system so that we can then bill the clients. It looks something like this. This is a flowchart of the desktop system, but we're only using it for the online system so that we can see the flow of the forms, which is in essence the same. So we're entering the time remembering that we could enter the time into QuickBooks. We could do it outside of QuickBooks, just giving us the timesheets from another software or possibly in an Excel or Word document. And the timesheets themselves might not be used as we're not really using them in our case to populate the payroll. And therefore we don't even need to have employees or the, the employee system set up within QuickBooks necessarily to apply this system because we might be charging our own time. As the partner or owner, we might actually do some work instead of just wheeling and dealing and pulling in the customers and whatnot and the clients and everything. So if we did that, we'd have to charge out our own time uh, and we might want to track our own time on the stuff as well. So, uh, so what we really want to do is enter the time here so that we can create the invoices. That's what we are doing. So whether we get the timesheets from an ex external source like uh, like an Excel worksheet or something like that, or whether we're tracking the time in the system or not. And we don't need employees to track the time necessarily, right? They might be a contractor or some other kind of system set up. They might be another partner. We might have an equity arrangement set up or something, but we're entering the time into the system. And then we're going to use that to bill out 
to the clients. Let's see how that worked. If I go to the first tab, you will recall that in the old system, we used to have to drop down under the employees and weekly time entry, but it looks like they're trying to move everyone to have the time entry now down here in this tab, the time tab, which you will have even if you don't have payroll turned on in the system, most likely unless you have the like the, the lowest tier version of QuickBooks Online, in which case you might still use the other method if they still have the capacity to use that if you needed to. But we can still have the time. We have the overview tab in the time here. We have the time entries and we have the time team uh, as well. So we're going to be in the time entries. We entered the time, selecting the drop down. We entered it on a week by week basis. And then if we go into any of those time entries, such as Adam Hamilton here, we can see that although we entered it on a week by week basis, it shows the time one at a time. So if I was to view the timesheet, then I can see the one time entry and I can go to the view the manual entry where we entered it as as a whole week's worth of data input, the weeks up top and the individual items below and the service item making it billable that we set up. So we set up a billable rate for the guitar instructors uh, and we then assigned the hours to a client so that now we can use this to pull directly over and populate to an invoice. To do this, we went into our items to set the billable item up. And now we can assign the item to the time that has been charged. And we went in and we approved all the time. So every all the time has been approved. If we needed to make a change at this time, we would need to unapprove as basically the supervisor and then make the adjustment before we approve again. We did a similar process with uh, uh, Erica. So Erica's our other guitar in instructor and we charged the time to our generic customer number four. So now we're just gonna go in and we're going to see how that time populates and pulls in nicely once entered into our invoices. Let's go into the sales tab and we can go into the all sales. This is one way that we can track it. We got this filter for unbilled income. Now this is income that isn't on the income statement. When we say it's unbilled, that means that we haven't we haven't uh, charged. Well, let me do that again. There it is. We haven't charged for the income. So we have this time in there and we haven't yet charged for it yet. No impact on the financial statements yet. These are just an internal document thus far. If I go to the customers, we can do the same thing. I can look at the unbilled income and now I can see the customers that those unbilled income items are for. So we charged two, Adam worked on two customers, two clients, guitar lessons, and then Erica as well. So if we go into one of those, we can see, for example, customer number one has this time charge in there. The next step would of course be to create an invoice. Now we could do the easiest way to do this would be just simply to select convert to invoice and it would then uh, populate the invoice. Now we could also pull in the billable time here and add the other billable time. You can see this billable time has been added, but we really want to add both of the billable times into the invoice so I can add this one as well. So now we have both of our billable times. If I tab through this, this is customer number one. And as of, let's say, 022724, let's say it's going to be the date. I'm going to close this back out and close this out get out of here and then down below we've got the adam uh hourly adam's hourly guitar lessons and i should probably put that so adam i should have put this in the description on the items guitar lessons let's say that on the description boom boom and 75 dollars each they're linked we can see of course to the billable time so that is good if you click on it it'll take you to the time entry which it shows in a card as opposed to the entire uh, time entry that we did week by week so that looks good it's not taxable because the item that we set up was not taxable we charge 75 dollars per hour two hours on two separate days and that comes out to 300 dollars. so there's our our invoice the 
uh, recording of it. It's pretty straightforward because there's no inventory involved. It's an, it's an invoice. What's it going to do? It's going to increase the accounts receivable. The other side is going to go to revenue driven to service revenue by the item here and the sub account for the customer accounts receivable will be impacted by customer. So see how easy that we can save and send it. This is what this is all the partner does. They go they go out and they they wheel and deal and have nice meals and whatnot and bring in clients and then they and then they tell people to work and then they charge for the work that the that the, the, the all the staff did. This is how it works. This is why you try to be the partner apparently you know apparently because that's what. <laughs> any case, that's tough work. I, I'm I'm just being I'm just kidding. Going out to try to wheel and deal and pull in clients is not. I don't think it's easy. Some people like it, but I'm not, not my favorite thing. I'd rather just grind it out <laughs> doing the account. Any case, let's go back into this. We're going to say that we have the accounts receivable and we're going to say that there's, there's the $300, uh, $300 do, 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 for, uh, our invoice. Here it is. This one, this is the one we made and that looks good okay the other side closing that back out back let's go back to the income statement the other side's on the income statement running that one it went into our service income there's the 300 dollars there looks like it should and so that looks good and then if i go back then uh we can see that there's no cost of goods sold because we didn't sell inventory there should be a sub ledger for the accounts receivable, let's open up the subledger report, right clicking on the tab to the right, duplicating it so that we can go to the reports on the left and then close up the ham boogie and scroll down who owes you. And we want to go in, by the way, you can, you can also run these reports for the unbilled charges and unbilled time. I don't think these are super useful because you can kind of see them internally but possibly if you wanted to see them in report format for the time entered that has not yet been invoiced, you can check those out. But I want to go into the customer balance detail, right click open. And if I go into that one, we can see it's for all dates, ham boogie closed. And there's customer number one, $300 owed to us. If we add up all the customers, we get to 21, 250, 650. That should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. 21, 251, 256, 50. If I go back to the internal uh, information to the sales area and we go into the unbilled income, it has now, uh, if I click on, I unfiltered it, that one charge should be gone now for, for uh, customer one is gone. And then if I go into the customers and if I went into unbilled, the customer one is gone because now we've, we've, uh, if I go into recently paid, then actually not recently paid. Let's just clear the filters and go into customer number one. All right. And so there's the two time charges have been converted. You could, you could uh, view them if we so choose over here. It goes one by one. Modify this timesheet does not uh, update the associated invoice. So uh, do you want to continue? I'm just going to say no close it yes and then the other side is in the invoice of course and the invoice has not yet been paid here's the activity of the invoice and if we were to edit the invoice we can see the time entries have been uh have been pulled in here we see the nice little link to see how they are connected together everything fits together nicely and has a nice beautiful audit trail now let's go ahead and just receive the payment. The next thing that would happen would of course be that we receive the payment. So the next thing we could see the, the invoice here and we could just say, okay, now we're gonna imagine that we got paid on the invoice. So we'll go into that customer number one. Let's say that happened on the 27th as well. I'm just gonna keep with cash for the form of payment. Could be any kind of form of payment. This is an internal form documentation. We're gonna put it into payments to deposit practicing the method of using that clearing account 
in the event that we're not getting electronic transfers for all of our payment and therefore need to go through the clearing account so we can group our payments in the format that will be on the checking account so we can easily reconcile with the help or use of the bank feeds or just in the bank reconciliation process. So there's the, the invoice. This is a receive payment form. We know that the receive payment form is going to decrease the accounts receivable. That's the first thing that should kind of come to mind. Although cash is affected, that's probably a lot of people's first thing that comes to mind. But you want to think this is linked to the invoice. It means accounts receivable is going to go down. The other side is going to be impacting cash in some way or checking in some way, cash and cash equivalents. But it's going to be going not in this case into the checking, but rather into the payments to deposit the clearing account. Okay, hold on. Before I do, though, I'm going to change this to February. I had it in January. Change it to February. We're on the second month of operations, and then we will save and close it, and then check out the balance sheet, and let's run the balance sheet, and then we should have accounts receivable going down. So if I go into the AR, the R account, accounts receivable is going down. There, this 300 for customer number one here, right there. And then we're going to go back and then the other side is in the payments to deposit within that 400 400 that we have on hand ready to deposit so we've got the 100 or the 300 there so that looks good and then uh internally if i go back to my sales tab and we go into our customers we have customer number one so that is the activity for the customer. We have this uh, invoice that we have received a payment for. If I select the invoice, we can see it's been paid, not yet uh, deposited. We're getting ready for the deposit. We've got the payment up top, which is closed. And we can see that payment is now linked to uh, the deposit. If we, if we edit the payment, we could see the payment linked, I'm sorry, linked to the invoice, and then we're going to make the deposit. All right, everything's lined up, looks great. All right, now let's make the deposit. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make the deposit from this. We're going, it's at the end of the night, and we're going to say we have this money that we're holding on to that is in the payments to deposit of $400. We don't want to hold on to that. There's crazy people around here. We want to take it to the bank put it in the lockbox where they've got security and insurance and whatnot. So that's what we're going to do. Now, even if you've got some other kind of payment, if it was a credit card payment or something like that, you'd still might use this account because I want to group it when I take it from here into the checking account in the same format that will appear on the checking account. And so I might have to use a similar method if I have some other form of payment that has a financial intermediary, such as a credit card. Let's go to the first tab to do that. We're going to say the plus button up top and let's just go into a deposit form. And we're going to say it's going into the checking account. Let's say 022724 is the date. I'm going to deposit both of these. Note that one came from a payment, which is the form after we have an invoice, we received the payment. The other came from a sales receipt, the form used when we're at a check register. Both of them we are imagining are cash. Therefore, Although from different types of transactions, we have cash on hand that we need to deposit into the bank at a lump sum of $400. Now, if it, so I'm just going to select both of them. If it was a credit card, you might have another account down here called charges, bank service charges or, or something like that, uh, bank service charges. And then you might have to reduce it by whatever the bank charges you because they take it out of your money before they deposit it into your account. So maybe they only hit your bank account with 350 instead of $400 because they charged you 50. And that's how you might account for that. So that when the deposit hits your bank, it's going to be there in the same amount that is on the bank statement. So you can easily reconcile possibly with the help and use of the bank feeds. All right, let's close that out though, because we don't have that. This is simply going to increase the checking account $400. Other side is going to decrease the undeposited funds. So let's save it. Do you have the right date? I do. Save it and close it. Let's go to the balance sheet. Balance sheet. I balance the sheet. I could balance the sheet of paper on my nose. I have talents. Here's the balance sheet. Watch this balance sheet action. So we're going to go into the checking account here and 
There's the $400 been deposited. Mui B to the N. Let's go back and say, Donde for crying out loud, esta la otra. That's my Spanglish, Spanish and English. Donde for crying out loud, esta la otra transaction. We're going to, oh, wait a second. Is that, so yeah. So then these so then these two went in there at 100 and then 300 and then went out in the same format uh, 100 and 300 so we can tick and tie them going in and out and there is that and the format that is in the checking account should now be in such a format that we can do the bank reconciliations and match it out possibly with the bank fees let's go to the first tab now and i'm in customer number one and we can see now that the payment has been deposited. So if I look at this invoice and I click on it, we can see the full activity it was open, paid, and then it even shows the deposit. So we get the full audit trail, which is really nice. So now I would like to just basically add the invoices for the other billable customers, but we're not gonna go through the receiving of the payment. So I'm just gonna go to the customers here and I'm gonna say that I wanna see the unbilled income so there it is and then i'm going to say uh, start invoice let's just go ahead and invoice them from here so i'm going to say start invoice boom and so let's say this one is as of customer number two both items have pulled in because i pulled the invoice in from that particular location instead of going into an individual invoice and then saving i want to invoice from the individual invoice so leave without saving no i want to just close this out and so there it is, 227, I'll keep that the same. And so then Anderson, these two 300, same thing's gonna happen here. It's an invoice, accounts receivable is gonna go up. The other side's gonna go to income. It's gonna go to a service income and the sub ledger will be impacted for the client. Let's go ahead this time, instead of saying save and send, I'm going to just say uh, save and print. We have the save over here. Let's do save and new this time. So I'm going to do save and new and say that this time we're going to customer, customer number two, number three, customer number three, same thing. Now the billable items are pop populating over here. I'm going to add them, bringing them in. We're going to use the same date. We're saying it's the end of February. Now we're charging out for Erica's time. Worked two, uh, four hours total. So that's 450. I'm going to close this up. The transaction being the same now for a new customer, though, increasing the accounts receivable because it's an invoice by uh, this amount and the other side going to the, the revenue account. Let's do one more. We had one more. And so I'm going to say save and new again. Ultra vase, another time. Here we go. We're going to go. This is going to be customer number four. I didn't hear no bell. That's from Rocky. He doesn't stop unless he hears bells. I don't stop unless I hear a bell because that's usually indicates that there's food. So I'm going to then go through here and say, this is Erica once again. Same thing for the next customer. Uh, in terms of the transaction increase in the AR, the other going to revenue. Let's save and close it this time. So let's just save and close and then we'll check it out real quick. Go into the balance sheet, running it. Let's run it to refresh it. We can see in the AR account, if we scroll on down, that we've got the customers for the AR numbers. We had the one, the two, three, and four customers. We have the AR for good, other side on the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement. Let's run it and then go down to the service product income. Check out the total for February. And we can see that we have the uh, February names. Uh, where are they? Where are they? Wait, this is product income. You're in the wrong area uh service income is what we're looking for in the service income we can see then under the names we've got there's our income there from the invoices looks good if we go to the sub ledger we're gonna say sub ledger over here 
and run that one. And we now see that we have customers uh, two, three, and four that we're going to collect invoices from. The total of the sub ledger broken out by customer 22,176.50 should tie out to the balance sheet of where 22,176.50. If we look at this internally, go into the internal tab, looking at our sales items, we then can look at the unbilled items. We shouldn't have any anymore because we have billed them out. We can then go into the uh, invoices. So now I want to say open invoices and there's our open invoices now. And we can track those invoices on the invoices tab, of course, as well. And we might say that we want to take a look at the unpaid invoices, Talvez possibly. And then we can also then uh, go to the customers and we can check out the unbilled income. We don't have any because we'd have now billed them out. And then we can undo that filter and we can go into these individual customers such as customer number two. And we can see that we have then the time charges have been converted and we see that we have the invoice. And if I go into the invoice, there's the converted. If I go into the invoice, we can see the link to the time charges. So that's great. So that's going to be our process. This is where we stand now in terms of the balance sheet. Let's run it to make sure balance sheet. That's where we stand. And then the profit and loss. This is where we stand on the P to the L, the profit and the loss. Let's look at the trustee trial balance running that. If your numbers tie out to these numbers and you're following along, great. If not, then try changing the range. See if it's a date range issue. Remember the trial balance is the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with assets, checking account, accounts receivable, inventory, investments, payment to deposit, prepaid insurance, accumulated depreciation, contra asset, connect to the furniture and equipment, the PP&E. That's one side of the coin, what the company has measured in dollars, not in units of inventory or equipment in dollars. Then who has claim to that? the uh, liabilities and equity starting with liabilities, accounts payable, visa, the government for sales tax, the bank because we took out a loan, and then the government for payroll taxes, unearned revenue, if we had any, would be a liability. And then our claim to the assets of the company in the format of owner investments, which would be similar to common stock issued by the corporation if it was a, if it was a corporation, and then owner's equity, similar to retained earnings, and then the income statement with income minus expenses, credits minus debits, credits being income, debits mean expenses, credits should win if we have income, and therefore we can roll this whole income statement into this one number, owner's equity, which is basically the same as retained earnings, which QuickBooks does automatically on a yearly basis. Let's check that out by changing the date range up top from 010125 to 010125. Run it and you can see the income statement due to them being temporary accounts, kind of like an odometer that instead of keeping it going forever, resets after we do every trip, in this case, a trip of year long trip to see how long we go in a year, reset the odometer, but the odometer doesn't go away. Instead, it rolls into the retained earnings or owner's equity, this being kind of like the odometer for the lifetime, right? It's kind of, right? And then the income statement would be like the resetting of the odometer that's going to start at zero in each of the temporary accounts and then count upwards for the next year.